All right, so your power just went out and you fired up the generator, but you're having a hard time because every time you turn the choke off, it stalls. I've got four things to look at um, to get you back up and running. Let's take a look at them now. All right, guys, before we get into the four reasons, let's just take a quick 60 second bird's eye view of what's going on with any small engine or any engine for that matter. We're looking at generators. So a generator or any engine is just a big pump. You have the piston inside and it is cycling at 3,600 RPMs. That means it's going up and down, up and down. Every time it goes up, it's pushing um, air out the exhaust. And every time it goes down, it is sucking air in through the intake area. That's a simplified view of what's going on. It's a little more complex than that, but that's essentially it. It's sucking air in through the intake and it's blowing air out through the exhaust. It's going at such a high rate of speed that when the air goes through the carburetor, it pulls gas along with it um, through the Venturi effect, which is basically like sticking a vacuum hose up here and there'll be gas in here. And just due to the force of the air moving by, it's gonna draw that gasoline out. That's what it's doing is it's just sucking it in to the engine as the piston sucks down and creates that negative pressure and draws the air in. So now that we got that covered, let's just take a quick look at what a carburetor does when you have the choke on and why we use the choke. Now we use the choke for cold starts. Um, that just means um, the first time that you start the engine. And what you need, what the engine needs is it needs a little more gas just to get it running for the first few seconds. And then we can turn the choke to half choke or turn it off. Now um, this is the carburetor. This would be the throttle butterfly in the back that moves and that'll dictate the RPMs once your engine gets going. But when you are, um, when you have it on choke, this butterfly valve here at the front, when the choke is on, it looks like that. And what it's doing is it's restricting airflow going through the main throat of the carburetor here. It doesn't stop all of the air, but it restricts it. And what that does is the suction inside of the engine increases as it can't get the air that it needs. So it has to draw from somewhere. And what it does is it's essentially pulling more gas out of the bowl to make up for that air that it can't get. And so it gets a little bit of a rich start of gasoline right at the beginning to get that combustion going. And you only run it that way for the first few seconds. You know that if you leave the choke on, if your engine's running normal, uh, your engine should actually stall if you leave the choke on or, or it will run very, very rough. But once you get it going for the first few seconds, you turn it to half choke just to uh, let it warm up. And then once it is warmed up, you take the choke off and now you have unrestricted airflow going through your carburetor. And of course, in the back, the throttle though, that can restrict the airflow depending on how many RPMs your engine needs to go. So now that we have that covered, let's get into the four reasons why. All right, reason number one that things might be stalling on you is just having poor fuel or bad gas. So you wanna make sure that you have good gas inside of your tank. I always date mine, I put the month and the year. I know this will be good for up to two years, although I try to cycle it after one. Um, I always use ethanol free gas and I use sea foam, which is a stabilizing agent for your gas. I always put one ounce per gallon inside of my um, gas cans. I mix it up and then I pour it in and I know I'm good for quite a while. I've run this after two years of having gas in. It runs just fine. Not a single problem. But if you don't remember the last time uh, you put gas in and you know for sure you did not use um, a fuel stabilizer, either stable or sea foam or any of the other brands, then you know that more than likely the reason for your stalling is due to the poor quality fuel that you have. Let's get into what you have to do to take care of that next. Okay, I have an older model Honda here that we're going to be looking at, but yours is gonna vary a little bit, but it should be basically the same concept is we have the carburetor here. It'll have this bowl, it kind of looks like a spaceship if you're new to engines. And what you have here are two screws on the bottom or two bolts. There's one on the very bottom. This holds the bowl on top and with, there's a screw here. This is the drain plug for the carburetor. What you're going to take is a, uh, first of all, you're gonna turn off the uh, fuel shutoff valve, which mine is located here and I would move it over to this position that it's in. And that isolates the carburetor from the gas tank. And now you're gonna have gas sitting in here, but it can't get refilled, refilled by the gas tank when the fuel shutoff valve is off. You would take a 10 millimeter wrench or a socket, you would loosen this up, have a jar underneath to catch the gas and remove this plug, drain it out. And um, that takes care of the gas inside of there. If you're lucky, you'll be able to see the fuel line that runs to your carburetor and it would connect to the carburetor at a position right here. And, um, Mine, I would have to take off the air filter, which is not a big deal. Just uh, unscrew this, take this cap off, remove the air filter. Then there's two nuts here that would come off and then this um, housing just slides right off this assembly. And then I would see the hose. And what you would do is you would take a pair of pliers to loosen the hose clamp, 
take a flathead screwdriver, pry off the um, hose, and you would put it inside of a jar that you're going to then repeatedly empty into a gas can until it's fully emptied, but you'll just toggle the um, uh, fuel shutoff valve as you go to let the gas flow out of the gas tank. Now you will have no gas in your gas tank, no gas in your carburetor, and you'll be able to fill it up with fresh stuff. But before we do that, let's get into the second reason why, because you're going to have to clean your carburetor anyways. And the second reason why your generator might stall after you uh, turn the choke off is due to a clogged main jet. And let's get to how to fix that next. All right, the second reason why your generator might be stalling after you turn the choke off is due to a clogged main jet. And you can do this usually while it's still attached to your generator. You don't need to remove it. Um, I'm going to just do this display model here just to make it easier to see. But you're going to, after the bowl is drained of gasoline and the fuel valve is shut off so it can't refill, you're going to take off of this uh, bottom screw with here. And it's usually a 10 millimeter, but sometimes it's a 12. All depends on the make and model that you have. Um, you will then carefully remove the bowl, uh, which looks like this on the inside. This is a brand new one, so it's not going to be corroded or anything. And then this tube right here, this has the main jet and the emulsion tube. And I already loosened it up, but you're going to need a screwdriver that fits in there perfectly. You might have to grind down a screwdriver on the edges because they flare out. You want a perfect fit. I already loosened this so it comes out easy. But basically what's going to come out is you're going to have the emulsion tube, which you might as well clean while you're at it, um, if I can focus there. All right, what you're going to have is the emulsion tube, uh, now that I focused, and it has tons of little holes on the side. And this is basically so the gas goes through at a high rate of speed and it vaporizes. It turns into a vapor, which makes it easier to combust in the engine. And um, what you're looking for, though, is this main jet. So you might as well clean this while you're at it. You can take a twist tie. Uh, burn the paper or the plastic off the twist tie so you get a thin little wire and poke the wire through all of these holes. And the same thing with the main jet here, which is at the base that holds the emulsion, emulsion tube in there. Um, you should be able to see daylight through this like you can right there. If that is blocked up though, you are going to stall as soon as you turn the choke off. So make sure you, you run your wire through there. If you have any carb cleaner, you can squirt it through there as well and the emulsion tube, but you need to get those cleaned. One thing I wanted to add is that if you don't have a screwdriver or you can't get this main jet out for whatever reason, uh, what you can still do is while it's attached, you just take that bowl off and you can still run that wire up through the main jet. You won't be able to clean the emulsion tube, um, which the emulsion tube is going to affect your performance if the generator is actually trying to power a load. But if you're just at idle, that emulsion tube is not going to be having any effect on that. But the main jet can still have an effect. So you can still run that wire up, clean that up, and um, that's better than nothing. All right, the next thing you're going to want to clean is the pilot jet. Now, um, this will really affect your generator while it's at idle. So if it's stalling while it's at idle and you turn the choke off, this is going to probably be your issue. Uh, what you're gonna wanna take off is the throttle adjustment screw here, if yours has one. And what you wanna do first is screw it all the way in. Um, mine's out at the moment, I'm basically using this for displays. But if you have a generator that was running well and um, it's just not running well now, screw it in all the way because this is controlling your throttle here. Um, it's a throttle adjustment screw. So you want to screw it in all the way and count how many turns that is. That way when you put the screw back in, you want to get it to the same spot, you screw it in all the way and you back it out that many turns so that it'll be in the original position. But what you want to do is remove this. And then you can pry this out with a flathead screwdriver. It's just in there. And then you'll see these bigger holes. All right, you'll see these bigger holes here. And that's not what you're really worried about. That shouldn't be clogged at all. But there is a tiny little jet here at the bottom, and it's very, very hard to see. Uh, you want to take a thin wire, like I said, that twist tie, and you want to push it through that jet to clear that out. There's probably an obstruction in there. It's a tiny, tiny little area. If you get anything in there, if it gets con constricted at all, you will stall at idle uh, when you turn the um, choke off. So make sure to run a twist tie wire through there. Put this back in. It just seats flat in there. Put your throttle adjustment screw back in. Screw it in all the way and back it out the number of turns that you had counted before. And your uh, carburetor should be all set to go. Let's get to the last step though. All right, guys, more than likely, 
those three things has already cleared your problem. I'd say 90 to 95% of the time, if not even more, your problem should be fixed. The last thing I would look at is that your carburetor is not tight to the unit. Um, so you want to just make sure that everything is bolted down nicely. If it is not, uh, that could be creating a vacuum leak where excess air is getting in. Um, due to it being loose here, it's sucking in more air just around the gaskets. And um, you now have too much air to the amount of fuel that's going into your combustion chamber. It's leading to inefficient combustion and it's running too lean and stalling out. Um, if this is tight and none of the other things worked, I would then recommend removing the air filter assembly here and then removing the carburetor completely carefully and just check the uh, gaskets that are around the carburetor. And um, if any of them are torn or missing, that's probably your problem right there. Um, again, that's going to create an air vacuum leak, allow access air inside of the combustion chamber, and you're going to have incomplete combustion. It's going to stall out as soon as you turn the choke off, because once you turn the choke off, remember, you are now introducing more air to the process. And if you already have a uh, vacuum leak where air is getting in there, now you have even more air and you have way too many problems. All right, guys, I hope this helps you out. I hope you get your generator back up and running for that power outage. And um, if you have any other things you can think of, of things to look at to get this thing fixed for stalling while um, you turn the choke off, then leave a comment below. Let's all learn from each other. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.